What's going on church fam? It's church life bringing y'all another video. I pray everyone is having a blessed day. So I was reading in Ephesians 4 verse 21 through 24 and it say, If so be that ye have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus, that ye put off concerning the former conversations, the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that ye put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. So the other day I was talking to the Heavenly Father about becoming a new creature in Christ. And the Heavenly Father gently spoke in my spirit. Don't give place to the devil. Don't allow the devil no room in your life to continue to keep you in a formal way of thinking. Don't be conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewal of your mind daily. And the Heavenly Father said, the reason why people feel depressed at moments in their life is because they're still holding on to something that's pertaining to their past. Now, here's what's crazy about this, right? You think you might got one thing to overcome. You know, that that very sin that you know, okay, once I overcome this, I'm going to be a new creature in Christ. Where the Father taught me, he said, in my spirit, you think it's one sin, but if it's attached to your past, there's 10 more sins that's attached to this one. So anything that you hold on from, from your past, even if it's one thing, that's what keeps you to every other thing in your past that you already have overcome. But guess what? That stuff that's in your past is fueling that one sin. And it keeps you in a stuck place. It keeps you depressed. It keeps you in an area of your life where it just feel like all your energy is just being drained out. Because that's the very thing that the devil is using to remind you of your past. I'm talking about everything that you may have done that you regret. And the Heavenly Father said, in order to become a new creature in Christ, we must let everything go that keeps us in the formal way of thinking. And that liberated my soul. See, the thing about the truth is this. Sometimes we don't want to hear a particular truth that might be pertaining to us because we still want to hold, hold on to stuff. There's things we still want to do. There's things that we want to listen to. We want to watch. And when the truth is finally being spoken to us, we don't hold ourselves accountable. So we try to shift the blame on something else. Oh, we do this because of this. Or we talk like this because of this environment. You know, things of that nature. And the Heavenly Father said, in order to truly change, we must be willing to speak the absolute truth to ourselves at all times. Because at the end of the day, it's not about the outward man. It's about the inward man. It's about who you are on the inside. See, Lord Jesus came to this world to fix our heart. Because our heart is what deceives us at moments. We do what's in our heart. And Lord Jesus came to this world to show us a better way to live. Because when you live in darkness, when you live in darkness by the words you say, by the conversation you have, you speaking about old stuff. You speaking about stuff that doesn't glorify the Heavenly Father. When you live in darkness, the words say, you are not of God because there is no darkness in God. God is light. There is no darkness in him. But it said, when you live in light, when you walk this narrow way that leads to life, then you are of God. And that's what's going to start changing your mindset of who you are as a person. That's what's going to start changing your heart. Because the light of Lord Jesus is so powerful 
that it can remove the darkness that's in your heart. See, the redemption power of Christ is this. Love, grace, mercy, and forgiveness. So when we start confessing the things we have done, and we start understanding that there is nothing I did to obtain grace, that's when we start feeling forgiven. And that's when we can forgive others. Because we didn't do nothing out on our own to obtain grace. That was all Lord Jesus. And the words say God delights in his mercies. See, in Ephesians 4 verse 29 it say, Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. So, when we come to God, we got to get to a place of speaking the word of God. We got to speak the word of God and we got to put away lying. We got to put away all these things that keep us stuck in the past so we can live in the newness of life. And the word even say it's okay to be angry, but don't sin. Sin not. Don't let the night fall upon your wrath. Put it away. Give it to the Heavenly Father. You may be angry in a moment because it's going to be stuff in life that calls us to become angry. But the more we learn how to leave it in the Heavenly Father's hands, that's how we really fight battles. We fight battles by prayer, fasting, and letting go. Sometimes that's the hardest thing to do, but we got to get to a place of having patience, not just with ourselves, but with other people. Because some people going to say stuff simply because they don't know you. They don't know what you've been through. They don't know how God transformed your heart, mind, and soul. They just want to make you feel bad based upon limited information. But don't fall for that trap because that's the trap of the enemy. Let every word, every conversation be for the use of edifying you in the spirit, ministering grace like that word said. We got to speak life in our situation, not death. We got to speak the goodness of God, not wrath. Because the word also say vengeance is the Lord's. God is going to fight for you. God is going to make everything right. He's going to help you change because in Christ we find new identity. In Christ, we are cleansed. We can't do this on our own. That's the power of grace. That's Lord Jesus, redemption power. So we got to submit. We got to submit to the will of God. If we was able to change ourselves, we would have did this already. We wouldn't have did those bad things that sometimes creep back into our mind and make us feel depressed. We would have been let go of certain stuff that was harmful to us if we was able to do it on our own. But we couldn't. See what Lord Jesus said. He didn't come to take away the law. He came to Fulfill the law. So when John the Baptist baptized Lord Jesus, that was the baptism for humanity. See, we sinned through one man, and that was through Adam. But then we was brought back to the righteousness of God through Lord Jesus. And he was baptized by John the Baptist. That was the baptism for humanity. That's why when the two thieves was beside Lord Jesus, one of them basically asked for forgiveness. One of them believed in Lord Jesus and he was saved. He was saved because Lord Jesus already put in the work. So now we just got to follow the ways of Lord Jesus. Once our minds 
or made new. And God put us in, put in us a clean spirit and a new heart. We got to maintain that walk by following the Lord Jesus. Walk by faith, not by sight. Some days ain't going to look pretty. Some days just may be challenging. But that's what it means to endure, to persevere. Because every time you endure temptation, that's how you live in the promise of, promises of God. And every time you persevere through a challenge, that's how you become stronger in your faith. We are made new by Christ. That's the point I'm trying to make. So, this season, it's time to let go. It's time to let go of everything that's keeping us attached to our past. Even if it's just one little small thing that you still do. We got to let that go too because that one little sin that keeps you connected to your past is the one sin that's keeping you connected to everything in your past that you've been let go. That one sin is being fueled by everything else that you let go in your past. When you let go of certain things in your life that was not good and stuff of that nature, but then you return back to it, it come back seven times stronger. And I believe it's like that simply because it already knows that you let it go before. So if the enemy knows that you let it go before, he's going to try to embed that in your mind even stronger now because he know you're on the right track of overcoming things that may have kept you down in the past. So we can't give the devil no place in our life no more. It's time to overcome the enemy with the word of God. That's why Lord Jesus is the one we need in our life because he is the word of God that overcame the enemy. God's word and eternal life manifest in the physical realm just so we can be saved and receive salvation. In Luke 11, verse 24 through 26, it say, when the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walked through dry places, seeking rest and find none. He said, I will return unto my house whence I came out. And when he come, he find it swept and garnished. Then go he and take to him seven other spirits more wicked than himself. And they enter in and dwell there. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. When I was reading that scripture, it just made me think about how sometimes when we return back to something of old, we become worse than we was before. So when the Heavenly Father deliver you out of an old environment or out of old relationships that's not working no more, just delivering you out of an old mindset, when God deliver you through Lord Jesus, don't return back to something that's going to cause you to become worse about how you feel, how you feel about yourself. Because that's one thing the devil does. He will try to make you feel so bad about who God is allowing you to become that you start to feel like you're unworthy. Of God's grace. You start to feel like you got to work for God's grace. But Lord Jesus did all the work. And he said the only work we should do is believe. Because his disciples asked him, what shall we must do to do the work of God? And Lord Jesus said, this is the work that you believe on whom the father have sent. Believe on whom he have sent. That's what's going to transform your life. Believing. So keep believing in God. By following Lord Jesus. We got to 
We got to believe that God sent Lord Jesus down as a representation of his mercy and grace that he have toward humanity. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. He didn't put away the law. He fulfilled the law. He was baptized for humanity. He was, he was whipped for humanity. He shed blood for humanity so we can be covered by the blood. That's the grace of God. Have faith in Lord Jesus. That's how you're going to be able to let go of your past. I pray this word bless you. In Jesus' name, amen. I love y'all.